Let's move on to the monthly budget report, Tim. Yeah, you have a couple of monthly budget reports. Um, the, the June report, um, as I highlighted, we, we finished the year um, $21,100,000. We were about 6% over budget or one point, uh, almost $1.2 million over budget. Um, <clears throat> the, the most significant items were the tax revenue, the tax refunds, and then the reimbursements from the state. And we've, we've talked about these items before, but just those first four items on the report, um, you know, account for over a million dollars of, of that, that excess over budget. Uh, the tax revenue came in about 2% higher than we had budgeted. Um, the, the tax refunds we've talked about were, uh, we, we, um, we came in $329,000 under budget. Uh, again, those are, those are items where we're, we're budgeting rather conservatively. Um, and, and obviously in this case, uh, the, the numbers came in much better than we had, we had originally anticipated. The special ed and the transportation reimbursements, those are the items that come from the state. Uh, combined between those two items, we were about $300,000 over budget. Again, I mentioned before that that's because the state has, has picked up on the payments that they're making. Uh, that they made uh, additional payments this year that they didn't make in prior years. Um, this year's budget for 2014, we, we set those amounts higher, anticipating that the state will continue making those, those higher payments to us. But uh, those were the major items that came in um, significantly over budget on the revenue side. Uh, on the expenditure side, we were $362,000 under budget. <clears throat> the, the biggest item in that was out of district tuition. And when you're budgeting out of district tuition, <clears throat> it's difficult to really anticipate what the actual expenditures are going to be. You don't know what students are going to be in the district, move into the district, that are going to need special tuition arrangements um, out of the district. Um, this year, in talking to, the, to, to Gail, our Director of Special Education, she feels that, that our expenses this year are going to be significantly higher. And she, she reviewed with Kevin and I a, a list of, of the students where she feels uh, the expenditures are going to be closer to what we had budgeted last year, which is why we, we budgeted those same amounts for this year. But, um, but, but last year, the actual expenditures came in about $270,000 under budget. <clears throat> We've talked before, before about the electricity, which, which uh, was $88,000 under budget, and then some of the other items there. <clears throat> um, what I was trying to do with the items that I highlighted was just show some of the major items that were under budget. There were obviously some things that came in over budget, but I wasn't trying to match the 362 and the 491. It was kind of a, an apples and oranges type of thing that I was trying to show. What's the biggest items that represent the difference that were over budget? Say again, I'm sorry. You, you were saying we were 362,000 old. Uh, under budget and expenditures, but we listed almost 500,000. Do you know what the biggest items were? There any big we items in 150 that came out way over budget? Um, I, I don't. I went through. I don't think there's any really significant items that were over budget. It was just you know there there may have been any number of different items. You know the, you know it was more items. I mean this is a list of about six items that were under budget that that makes up that kind of money. Um, the, the the items that were over budget. <clears throat> I can go through and do an analysis, but it, it, okay. it ended up being, you know, it's, it's more items than, than just a few things. Um, operating fund balances, $7.3 million, and again, it resulted in a surplus of, of, uh, of, of almost $1.3 million. Um, there, there was a question regarding the, um, the debt service. Um, if we look at the actual numbers, the, the, the debt service, Page. Um, this is on page uh, page 26. 26. Um, we came in about fifty-seven thousand dollars <throat> um, in in excess expenses over revenue, and and part of the reason for that is that we had one hundred twenty-five twenty-nine thousand dollars in tax refunds. Um, if, if we look at just the tax collections, five point eight million dollars, uh, five million eight hundred fifteen thousand. The expenditures on the bonds was uh, $5,872,000, so the numbers were very close. Um, the difference overall had to do more with the tax refunds that we paid out. Um, and these tax refunds were for prior years, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. on, on page 26, it shows the difference between the 
revenues and ex revenues less expenditures a credit of one hundred eighty eight thousand dollars. One eighty seven, right? One one eighty seven eight eighty seven. I rounded up to one hundred eighty. Right. Right. That's because the revenue, the revenue that we had for on tax collections was a little over five point eight million dollars, but we returned one hundred twenty nine thousand dollars, which is why the the total revenue drops down to. Five point seven okay. million dollars. The five million seven hundred two. Um, the five million eight ninety. Five. The majority of that is is the payment of interest and principal on the bonds. A small part of that is the interest we earned in that account that was transferred over to the education. That that amount that's transferred over is considered an expenditure. Thank you. Um, there was also a question about the. <clears throat> One of the expenditure line items in, uh, or actually a couple of expenditure line items, in the in the uh, special education fund, and I think what I. Page. This is on page 46. Um, we show, on one of the, on the certified salary line item, a budget of 747,000, and we show an actual expenditure of 930,000 dollars. The reason for that, <clears throat> um, and, and I think about. I, I talked about this was that the last year we budgeted um, social workers out of the student services department we paid those expenditures out of special education so that's why it, it throws that account off if you look correspondingly at, at the budget for and the actual expenses for for student services you'll see that the expenditures were significantly lower that's been corrected for this year as we go forward um, the other item <coughs> that I had mentioned was that that when we set the budget, we took all of the medical and, and dental ex expenditures budgeted out of special education. That was something that um, that I shouldn't have done, and so I put those actual expenditures back in there so that we can match, uh, because we get measured every year on the, the amount of special education expenditures. We can't see a drop, and if I hadn't moved that money back, there would have been a drop. So those line items are, again, over budget because we didn't budget in those, but I had to put those actual expenditures into that. That's the 277? Pardon? Is that the 277 on the bottom of the same page, the medical insurance? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions for Tim? Yeah, two, yeah. two, two questions on the expenditures. Uh, or one question. The community service. What page? Uh, page 34 of the actual detailed statement of expenditures. What, who, who is in the temp uh, salaries in community service? Which would be page 62. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's 62. Yeah, we no. have a number. Because um, that's over budget by $47,000. The, the biggest part of that is uh, the, the budget of 50000 the expenditures of 81000 That's age group gymnastics, I believe, uh, which is significantly over budget, but the revenue line item is, is also right, the revenue is significantly over, over right. budget. Um, the other the, that also uh, those temporary salaries also include swim lessons. Uh, it includes the open swim expenses for that, and it includes expenses. A small amount of it is the expenses for what they call the wet program, which is an adult aerobics class in, that they have in the pool. And, right. and also for the lifeguard. Well, the lifeguarding for the North Riverside Intergovernmental right. Agreement, right? I mean, because you take that forty. Forty-seven in community service over budget. Combine that with the treasury fee, the treasurer's fees that we just talked about, which was thirty thousand, right? Yeah. Th Thirty-eight thousand over. You basically got your differential between your three eighty-two and the four. I mean, ninety-one. You give yeah. or take twenty thousand or so. Yeah. Right? So yeah. Okay. You, you are right. There's there's a couple items that are okay are significant. Any other questions for Tim? Um, Are you reporting just on 2012 so far, or is that 2012 and 13? That, that's just 2012 okay. so far. The, the other thing I wanted to mention was that on the registration fees, there had been a question before about registration fees. We collected last year uh, about $198,000 in registration fees. We had about $36,000 that was waived uh, for, for, for the students that qualified uh, for waivers. And um, we still have about twenty-four thousand dollars that's still due to us. Um, so that, that, was, that was kind of a, a breakdown on the 
on the registration fees. The 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 financials for the month of, of July, um, four point seven million dollars in revenue. Again, the the same thing that, that George was talking about with regard to <clears throat> the the property taxes July and August with the August first date um, are the big months where we collect the money in terms of the, the property taxes. Um, you can see there almost four point three million dollars in revenue in the month of July uh, on property taxes. Uh, we also picked up, we've picked up so far in the month of August about $4.8 million in, in property tax revenue. Um, so I, I think between, between the two months, we're probably going to pick up about the same as we did last year. Uh, last year, the month of July was a little bit higher than it was this year, uh, but we're, we're also picking up quite a bit in, in August. So I think overall, after the end of the two months, you know, we, we should see an evening out of that. So we're, we're a million behind. Where we we're a million behind at the end of August, July, where we were last year. But you just think it's timing between the two months. I think it's timing. Yeah. Taxes. On, on the sixth of August, we picked up two point seven million dollars in, in okay. tax revenue. Kevin, if you could backtrack, you said twenty four thousand dollars is owed from registration fees from last year. Yes. I'm sorry, Tim. Yeah. Forgive me. Yes. How are we going to collect that? Um, we, at some point, we send out we, we send everything out to a collection agency that we use. Was would this have been students that graduated? Some of it may be, um, but a lot of it is students that are still here. Yeah, we, shouldn't uh, that be tightened up a little bit? We I have mean, we have procedures in place where yeah. students uh, aren't allowed to buy their prom tickets and do some of those things until their fee balances <coughs> are squared up. What we see the common practices is a lot of them will let those fee balances run for three years and not pay them till April of their senior year. Yeah, we, we get a huge flood in April, the two or three weeks before the prom, but people come in and paying fees because they can't get prom tickets if they don't. That's we almost 15% and, and, uh, of what was supposed to be collected, right? Pardon? I'm That's sorry. That's almost 15% wasn't paid. If we did 198 and 36 were waived, that leaves 162. And twenty-four thousand is almost fifteen percent of that. You might be doing yeah. for multiple years. Oh, right. yeah. So it might be a little well, over. But you you were just the, doing last year's when you did the number, right? Well, no, the, the twenty twenty-four thousand dollars that's due is the total amount of registration. Okay. I'm sorry, that's cumulative. Okay. So <laughs> what we have in place is one, they can't get a pr the prom ticket. Two is if they graduate, we don't give them their diploma. Am I right? Or is that? We, we, the legal counsel advised uh, a little differently because of some court cases. So um, we, we work with them on a couple of things with that in regards to a formal transcript and an informal transcript and some of those areas. Okay. But we use a collection. We, we do pursue this pretty, I mean, since Tim and I got here, we implemented a collection agency. Um, and I think Pam was doing some of the stuff with the diplomas and prom tickets before we got here. So we have a pretty, as stringent as we can be, we can be. Okay. And we send out, you know, statements. Um, we do phone blasts through Skyward. Um, we warn people about late fees and those types of things. So, I mean, we, we try to do everything that we can. Um, and then if it doesn't work, obviously, then we send it to collection. Okay. Any other questions um, for Tim? Yeah, he has a few. There's just a couple other things I want to. Oh, I included in your packet a copy of the, the contract tool, um, which I'll do, you know, a couple times a year. Um, it shows the all of the, the contracts that we have, and it shows the due dates. The only real contract that's coming up for next year, if we want to take a look at it, is the auditors, is Evan Marshall and Pease. We've had them for three years. Um, they were hired to do the audit for 2011, 2012, and 2013. So they'll complete the audit this year. Then, then next year, we would have to make a decision to either continue with them for the 2014 audit or go out again for an RFP on, on auditors. Um, Let's put that on the agenda the month after we get the audit. That's good, yeah. To discuss it? Yeah. OK. OK. And Tim, you make um, that note to submit that to Mary Ann, please. Yeah, and there was a question on Educational Benefit Cooperative, whether or not the attorneys had reviewed um, the contract that we have with them, and, and they had they did review it before we before it was signed before you approved it, um, and, and they've reviewed that for other school districts. It's similar for other school districts. Um, 
And the other thing I wanted to add to th that in addition to what George had said was they also act as the treasurer for our activity accounts. We have an activity, we have activity accounts. We have a, a one bank account. It's at First American Bank. Um, we, we generally have somewhere between two and three hundred thousand dollars in that account. Uh, we have about 138 different um, separate activities that we track. Uh, the majority of them are fundraising activities. A lot of it is with sports. Um, over fifty thousand dollars of that money is set up in one account, which is for scholarships. Um, but the, but all of the transactions for the activity accounts go through the same procedure as the, the procedures for the bills. Um, they have to be approved by the sponsors. They have to be approved by by the the administration over the main office. Then they come in and um, <clears throat> people in my office look in the accounts, make sure there's enough money for it, and and then I approve them and, and sign the bills. And again, then the treasurer's office gets the statements and they go through and reconcile it and act as the treasurer for those accounts and obviously they're bonded. Um, yeah, but we're still going to get an overview of that and the state rule that we suggested for a future agenda item, right? In regards to the fund transfer or the activity? The activity accounts. Yeah, he has that written down, some things he was supposed to report out on. Okay. Yeah, what I, I guess I again for him. can you clarify a little bit what what exactly you're looking for in terms of the, act, yeah, the activity accounts? Sent you information about it. The treasurer's 50 page brochure on board's responsibility for management funds says they have a fiduciary obligation to manage those activity funds. It also says, I believe, that if a fund has a balance at the end of the year, you're supposed to transfer it somewhere else. And I'm tr I asked if you could give us an overview of the whole process, how it works, how it's collected, how the funds are, how the rule is, and what we're supposed to be looking at and deciding because we have a fiduciary obligation to make sure those funds are managed properly and according with the state rules. And you have been rolling some of those funds in. We Well, actually, the board policy that we have says that the, the fund balances carry over from year to year. That's what our, our board policy says. Well, well I fun, still, I, I asked if this could be put funds. on the agenda and have it as a separate item to go over a couple of months ago. I said there wasn't a hurry, but I assume we're still, the board was all here when we did it. I assume we're still going to, that's going to happen at some point, right? We can, yes. Thank okay. you. I'm going to put it on for the September, okay? Do, do you yeah, have I a guess, question to clarify? Well, I, I'm not sure. I mean, we... Are you looking at the procedures we follow? Are you do you want to see the actual balances in the accounts? I, I'm not quite sure. Uh, yeah, I'd like to, and I hope the community would like. And I'd like to, again. I sent a thing. Here's what we do. Here's what goes in. Here's what comes out. Here's what the rules are, both our policy and the state law, the state regulation, how we're supposed to manage those funds as a board. Okay. Does it? Well, I, I guess I mean, we, we have the, the account. We, we track in the business office each of the individual activities. As I said, there's about 138 different act, activity accounts within that bank account. Um, and, and, you know, we process those checks, but we process them in the same way that we process anything else. Those, those checks don't come here for approval. Um, because most of it is fundraising money, and, and in a sense, it's it's not considered board funds because it's it's fundraised by the students. Um, I would say if, if you took the the scholarship fund and, and the sports activity funds, that would make up the the bulk of it. But but there are so. I mean, procedure-wise, we follow the same procedures that we follow in terms of issuing any kind of a check. Well, um, what I'm hearing from Jim is we. We're, fid we're fiduciaries, we have a fiduciary responsibility, and we just want to make sure that uh, we're following yeah, the I mean, law. The, the, they're audited every year by the auditors. But it's, it's included I believe as Tim cited us some sp uh, some actual uh, statutory sections. It was a with ISBA rule. Again, I might have read it wrong. It's I not a rule. I think it's a recommendation out of that 50 uh, Illinois budget one. But you did send it. We'll and check it said, out. And there it said you have to, you're supposed to transfer the balance at the end of every year. Maybe it's a typo. But again, I even if it's five minutes or ten minutes, okay. I, I would just like to 
understand how its money's collected, how it goes in. And again, yes, I understand you approve it and it goes through here, but you know, I, I don't. I think it's worth the time for us to take and look, make sure we fully understand it. Okay. About a, about a year ago, when you brought in like the, the different kind of types of uh, sheets and procedure you use, I would do the same thing. If there's a deposit slip that the sponsors use. Um, uh, the purchase receipts, those kind of things. It, it, it'd be good to show some blank ones at the board so they can get an understanding of the process. Okay. Okay. Any other questions for Tim? I do. Tim, on your, on your July statements, I'm assuming we didn't go back to self-insurance. I'm assuming that was just no, miscoded no. one month, and you're going to get it corrected. And I, well, I think that that balance, because the amount of that balance, I'm not sure it can be transferred into the education fund. So we're going to have to look at at. at at, uh, well, no, it's showing, it's showing an expenditure on your typed up statement. It? Oh, that's an error. Sorry, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. You, you, oh, that was from the previous period, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right, but was that the. Okay. In July, we had that kind of. Yeah, we did. I don't yeah know. that was okay. last year we had those. Okay. Uh, right. John, you had a question? Yes, and uh, I'm sorry if you've answered this. What determines if it's board or administration contract approval? Less than twenty-five thousand yeah. dollars of an expenditure, and then there's some per year or total. Total contract. length of the contract agreement, and then um, the other one is there's some services that under board policy and state school code that are not required to go out to bid, like copying fees and some technology fees um, that are not required. When it says responsibility facilities manager, uh, like who's double checking that? Is, is that Joel and, Tim, Joel and Tim meet on those, like with the exterminator and some of those things? So, what's the check and balance on that? Joel brings those contracts to Tim, and then we discuss it in our weekly finance facilities meeting, which is every Tuesday. And then we discuss on what we're doing. Like, for example, we're releasing, recently just had to purchase a new freezer. Joe brings us two or three quotes on the freezer and then a repair, and how much it costs to repair the freezer. And then Tim and I look at that and talk to Joel, what's the best product, what's the best savings, and then we, so we, the three of us meet on those expenditures. <coughs> Joel's not allowed to just go and spend our money. Well, I figured that, but <laughs> we've got to keep our eye on you guys too, right? <laughs> You, oh got my that, God. So okay. you got that fiduciary responsibility. That's right. That's right. That word came up. Yeah. Actually, All right. Any other say, questions yeah, for Tim? Me, Tim I, I, I lost, when I was asking a question on self-insurance, I went to the wrong. You do have an ending fund balance in there. Yes. And you're telling me we, we have to keep it there? What, what can we do? to? Can we transfer it anywhere? I, I think we're going to have to pay money out of it as opposed to transferring that money. Because the runout's Which, not over? No, the runout's over. So how... Do you anticipate doing that? So much. Right. I mean, that's 300 and if round at $350,000. If we start paying medical expenses out of that fund as opposed to the education fund. Okay, so you're going to look into that somehow yeah. to see yeah. how we can. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Are the other we, side, I noticed that sheet of contracts, but we have a couple of long term revenue side deals on those. That beautiful tower that we have on First Avenue, um, but yet I know there were some negotiations going on last year on it, or because there was a sweet deal given to a particular cell company because they didn't have to pay for a couple of years. Can you maybe maybe next month? Can you get us the revenue side of what's going on with those cell towers sure. and and where we currently are? If we are starting to get money from that one cell company, yes. And I know you had conversations about possibly t uh, one of them adding to the tower, but then there was the talk of them merging, uh, one merging with another one, and that was on hold. And there, I, I don't know where that stands. There was some discussion last year that AT and T had. They were they wanted to buy out um, the contract that we had, uh, and they basically said that they were they were looking at closing, uh, or not closing, but um, consolidating, consolidating, consolidating tower. towers. Okay, and so their, their insinuation was that, that our tower might be consolidated with, with another one. Um, and then they were making offers of, 
of giving us lump sums uh, in order to, to to get out of the contracts. But I thought I thought T-Mobile approached you, but then there was discussion. T-Mobile approached, and then there was another company that approached, and um, you know I pursued both of those. I call them every once in a while, but they just keep saying, "Well, we're looking at it. We're looking at it." Okay. And, and they haven't done anything. And the AT&T proposals, when we costed them out, we thought it was better to stay in our current agreement. Yeah, and then you also had the one where it moved off of the chimney to the tower and the school district. Right. Gave that's the up. one that was AT&T. No, that's Sprint, I no, think. Sprint. That's they didn't have to pay for Sprint, yeah. five years or three years or something like that. And could yeah. you tell us what the status of if we're getting revenue yet off of that? Yes. Thank you. All right, any other questions for Tim? Gary, you have any more? Or? 